Hey what is up guys welcome back to books by the sea this is a book review for the art of racing in the rain uh, as you can see the lighting is not really good there's a storm outside and I haven't had electricity for like the past 10 12 hours so I actually wanted to delay the book, the book review I really wanted to um, you know follow my usual procedure for writing down a few notes and trying to be articulate about it but the thing is this book has gripped me so much and I just really want to talk about it before I lose the thought process and even though the conditions aren't really good right now I thought I'll make a review nonetheless and even if I don't end up using this video I could definitely use the thoughts that I have right now before they are lost and maybe make a new review at some point or the other but uh, so yeah let's get into it and let's jump into the art of racing in the rain while it's raining outside. Before we get into the book review though, I want to apologize for any focusing issues that might take place while you're watching the video or for the background, not background noise that's going on outside. So like I said, there's a storm going on outside, there's not there's not, you know, enough lighting in here, there's not there's no electricity for the past twelve hours or so, so doesn't make for the best um, video recording conditions but um, here we go. So the art of racing in the rain. What do I really say about this book? Where do I even start? This book was a slow burner, but it is an absolutely phenomenal book. Let me just say that right out of the bat. Uh, so my initial thoughts while reading this book. Um, let's okay, but before before we get into the initial thoughts, let let me just talk about what the book is about. So the book is about um, this particular family. Um, I'll tell you why I'm talking about the book this way. So the book is about Denny, a race car driver on the side, an amateur race car driver or a semi-pro race car driver who's uh, you know trying to make his dreams come true uh, in being a professional racer and at the same time manage a family life uh, and also his wife uh, Eve and his daughter Zoe and the whole experience of this family is told through the eyes of their dog Enzo. So the reason why I'm saying this and the reason why I'm not saying this is a book about a dog is because initially I started off thinking this is a book about a dog and um, you know the dog's relationship with the family and how he sees the world which is true it is about how Enzo the dog sees the world and how he sort of uh, reflects upon human nature and a lot of different things. But I was fooled into believing that this book is about Enzo. This book is not about Enzo per se. It is about Enzo, but it's not really about Enzo. So the initial few chapters when I was reading this book, um, you know, I was sort of thinking of it from the dog's point of view, which really isn't the case. Once I once I hit like a couple of chapters, I didn't really like the beginning of the book. It was very slow. It was sort of testing me with how you know the direction in which it was going. But like they say in the book itself, um, like they talk about in the book, the first couple of laps in racing is to test out the tires, test out the car, get a feel of the car, and then you do the hot lap, right? So that's what I experienced. This it's exactly what I experienced when I was reading the book. The first couple of chapters, it was just you know I, I didn't really know which direction it was heading in. I didn't really know what the main theme of this book was about but once I really got going, once it hit those higher gears, those higher revs while reading the book, it was such a joy to read this book. It was absolutely, it was, it was a ride, it was, it was really like a ride, it was like a Nürburgring of emotions you can say and um, you need to be a really specific set of, cat, uh, set of, um, uh, I don't know, I really don't know how to say that, you need to be a specific set of person, a set of different personalities to get every single aspect of this book because there are a lot of different things uh, that are in it which you wouldn't really get if you're not a certain type of person. For example, if you weren't a dog person, you wouldn't get a lot of this book. If you weren't a car racing person, you wouldn't get a lot of this book. If you aren't a weather person and don't like the rain, you won't get a lot of this book. So if you are a little bit of all of these things, I can tell you you're definitely going to love this book. Okay, I digress. The Let's let's get back to what this book is about. So, like I said, this book is about Denny or Dennis, who's the aspiring race car driver, and all of the different troubles and tribulations that he faces, you know, while trying to achieve his dreams, told through the eyes of Enzo the dog. So, when I was initially reading this book, 
and I was looking at it from Enzo's point of view. It almost seemed amateurish. It almost seemed very childlike. The quality of reading or the quality of narration was very childlike. The quality of um, the way certain things were set up seemed very. Um, if you guys have read um, the curious case of the dog in the night time, it felt like that. Um, you know that kind of narration. But then that's when it clicked. You know, that's when it hit me. This is not someone, this is not a guy narrating this book. This is the dog narrating to the book. So stuff, that level of sort of dogginess is, um, you know, expected when you have a, a, a narrator that's supposed to be a dog. And you sort of do feel that thing where someone, a dog selling you the story from, for the most part. A uh, very intelligent dog nonetheless. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, what the main story is about. The thing with the book itself. So the book explores... A lot of really really heavy topics which I feel are not really talked about in um, the general media nowadays or in a lot of different media formats and that's the struggles of a man so like I said a lot of people go into this book thinking that this book is about a dog I'd say this book is about Denny more than this book is about Enzo uh, I definitely feel like that um, in one of the in one of the the chapter is one of the quotes uh, Enzo says in the book. Enzo says, uh, you know, I wish people were better listeners. I wish human beings were better listeners. When you're a talker, what happens is that, you know, when someone's telling you something, you don't really take that uh, at its primal value. So you sort of keep linking things. Oh, like um, someone will tell you about, oh, did you did you see this uh, particular maybe football match? And and then you talk about, oh, my God, like uh, this guy reminds me of the way Pele is playing. And then Pele and, you know, just you just bounce off various different topics without really trying to understand what the person who's initiating the conversation with you is trying to tell you. And that's what you need to sort of learn about this book. Um, don't sort of try and link, thing too mu link things too much, but just sort of go along the flow with what Enzo or the dog is trying to tell you. And um, you'll have... Um, a very nice ride along in this sort of journey with him as how as to how he sort of grows up in this household, different dynamic, the different relationships um, that he's built up with different members of the household and the, the relationships of each member with each other and you know how it sort of plays out. This is a very, very well the more I, the more I talk about it, the more I realize it's a very well written, very subtle book when it comes to the relationship building and describing a relationship. Somehow I feel very intimate with all of the different characters without um, without it being really intelligent talk and that's something that's really really difficult to pull off and I don't know how Godstein is Godstein Godstein has really pulled this off with such a simple and such a um, you know such a basic narrative and that's really something that has to be commended. Um, the second thing that I'd like to talk about is um, with regards to different um, struggles that Denny faces. So um, something that is something that really bothers me, or something that really affects me on on a personal level, something that I faced, and something that um, I see that is faced in people's lives around me is the struggles of a man. I mean, this sounds really, this sounds really corny, and this sounds really. Um, you know, like I'm pushing some sort of agenda here, but that's not the case. I do really, really feel for the struggles of man. It's because it's not really talked about a lot. And this is something that's really glossed over in a lot of different aspects of the world nowadays, wherein the amount of immense pressure that men face on a daily basis, um, you know, you'll talk about, you'll hear people talk about single mothers, you'll, talk, you'll hear people talk about assault victims, you'll hear... Uh, you know, people talk about, um, you know, gender equality, inequality in the workplace and things like that, you know, on behalf of the women. And so that's a really, that's a really good thing because these are, these are topics that need to be spoken about and these are topics, um, or rather these are things that affect women in the workplace. These are things that affect women as a whole and, you know, this needs to be talked about. But at the same time, I do feel that a lot of different struggles which men face aren't talked about a lot because... Um, you know, it's whether it's society's perception of men being more stoic in nature or, you know, they're sort of able to deal with things when it's not necessarily the case. And this sort of gives, uh, when, you know, when Gartstein talks about this through the narrative of Enzo, this sort of uh, gives us a nice picture, not a nice picture, it's actually a horrible picture, but it gives a picture nonetheless of what 
uh, we have the other side of the story of a lot of different issues that men face and you know that's something that I really like from uh, it explores themes of, of financial troubles uh, it explores themes of uh, single parenthood it explores themes of um, being a victim of um, mental like a mental assault rather than a physical assault uh, it explain uh, explores themes of uh, trying to be successful the amount of stress and pressure there is to become successful in life and chase your dreams uh, also the stress of trying to balance both your dreams and reality and um, you know trying to keep up social appearances and these are things that are not really talked about a lot and that uh, you know that sort of really um, it really, I really like that it, this, this is spoken about in the book. You know, like I said, this is not just a dog story. This is not just a story of Enzo and his lover uh, driving and you know racing and things like that. There's, there's much deeper uh, themes at work here. There's much deeper thoughts at play, and that's something that I really liked about the book. Um, another thing, what I would like to say is some of the themes that I explored, right? Um, like for example chasing your dreams or you know being financially successful and things like that i like the way that it's spoken from a dog's perspective it really gives you a different dynamic uh, as to how to approach this topic which is really like i feel like there's almost genius level i don't know if godstein or godstein uh, i don't know if i'm pronouncing that if, i don't know if he did, did this um, purposefully i don't know if he did this um, you know specifically um, for this particular topic but it's like a genius move to explain such deep and heavy topics through the eyes of a dog who's really not uh, you know into material things or doesn't really face the stress himself so it takes away the heaviness of the topic while still being relevant you don't really feel like oh my god such a heavy topic and things like that it keeps it a little light but at the same time it keeps it very important because of how close Enzo is to uh, you know his family and things like that um, it also deals with the loss of um, having a loved one with a lot of uh, in a lot of cases I've seen that you know when men lose someone they love uh, they are sort of supposed to supposed to be strong and supposed to be uh, you know they're supposed to carry the family and things like that but you know that's not necessarily necessarily the case and if um, usually if men do talk about their feelings or if men uh, do um, sort of uh, try and talk about it they're always perceived as weak or they're perceived as cowards or they're perceived as you know if they take a decision wherein you know they're sort of looking after themselves they're considered to be cowards or something like that and that's also explored in this book where you see a protagonist um, you see Denny sort of struggling with um, a lot of different things in life and you see the amount of um, you know backlash that he faces from his um, in-laws from society from people um, you know around um, around him in life from people at his workplace and it shows the, the devastation a person can feel from losing people they love from wrong accusations in society and uh, from you know just the daily struggles and pressures that people face but that being said let's come to the the, the other side of it right the way this book motivates you to sort of get over that is something that is astonishing. I'm a huge believer in motivation and you know all of these different things where um, you know um, I, I'm a huge believer in sort of keeping yourself motivated and keeping yourself positive but this book takes it to a different level. It just takes it to a different level. Uh, I won't be ashamed to admit it at the end of the book I was just sobbing I couldn't stop sobbing not because of the so uh, you know you'd probably think oh like oh it's a very sad book because spoilers and so dies but you know that wasn't why I was sobbing it's just overcoming adversity this entire theme of overcoming so like I said this book explores the themes of adversity in a man's life right and the the way Denny and Enzo overcome the adversity is it's just it's just amazing for me I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a sucker for comeback stories I'm a sucker for like it, it's choking me up right now even just to talk about it I'm a sucker for La Remontada 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 the comeback I'm a sucker for that right so that's something I absolutely loved about this book if you feel that you're down in life this book is very sad but read it it will 
it will lift you up it will show you that there is a way out it will show you that there is um, there is you never give up basically it just tells you never ever ever give up speaking of motivation some of the lines that the book uses some of the characters that the book uses these are the best of the best when it comes to motivation right i mean so like i said you need to you need to know a lot about racing you need to know a lot about f1 to understand a lot of different references that are taking place in the book itself uh, you need to understand you need to be a car guy to get like the car stuff the racing stuff you need to be a dog person to get the dog stuff but the car stuff is absolutely on point i can tell you from reading this book that the car stuff the racing aspect of the art of racing in the rain is not at all superficial uh, when gartstein through enzo is talking about senna and um, you know all of these different race car drivers and the cars you know you could see the sort of joy leap up from enzo's words when he's talking about it and when it comes to the motivation there are there are lines in this book that just hit you like a hey make you know the rain falls on everybody but it doesn't fall on senna a lot of races are won in the first, no lots of races are lost in the first turn or something of that so i'll just get back to you on that quote but oh my god when you're reading this damn book it just hits you and it hits you like you do not expect it you go into this book thinking oh it's just another feel good dog story and it pulls you out of there feeling like you're reading about rocky or ali or you know tyson or something like that because this is really an inspirational book it really pushes you it really pushes your buttons it makes you feel angry it makes you feel motivated it makes you feel it makes you feel like you're in a ferrari f430 on a straight pedal to the metal on the highest gear a red lining that's what this book makes you feel and you need to be a car guy or a car girl to really get that emotion you know that sort of like i feel it in myself right now you really need to be that you really need to understand the weight of the words as a lot of weight in these words it's not a superficial book it's not a it seems like it's supposed to be a very light hearted book but it's not there are a lot of underlying themes here and that's something i really 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 loved about this book and i would definitely recommend you read this book now uh, here's another aspect that i'd like to talk about so immediately after i read this book i was told to watch the movie of the you know the adaptation of this book the movie adaptation of this book starring uh, milo milo ventimiglia um and i know this is going to sort of upset a lot of people but the movie i feel the movie did not live up to the book whatsoever in fact i, I would even go I hadn't said the movie was kind of like trash compared to the book, just because of how many different aspects, just because of how neutered the movie was compared to the book. So a lot of a lot of the, a lot of the reasons why this book is special is because of the palpable tension, the palpable stress that Denny is facing, and the palpable um, sort of situation. You actually feel the struggle when you're reading the book. in the movie it just kind of felt like a very feel good thing if this book was an 18 year old scotch then the movie was a bacardi breezer which is not necessarily not not necessarily a bad thing um but i definitely felt it was very dilute compared to the book um a lot of so basically from what i've read about this about the movie itself the movie was long delayed and i finally it was picked up by disney and disney in an effort to make it very child friendly or to make it very um, you know family friendly and pg13 and not really an r rated movie or something like that they've taken out the sliced out major chunks of the themes that are being explored in here to sort of keep it at that level which is very weird because this this movie could have really been something else this could have been this could have had so much social commentary and this could have addressed so many different issues in a visual format and this it's it's actually something that's required for this day and age but somehow in an effort to make this a very kid this they almost try to make this like a mali and me too kind of thing like a very um, you know very dilute very fun family friendly version of things story about a dog and they just took away like the heart of the book which is 
struggle, the struggle of Enzo and Denny. It's, it's, I just don't see it in the movie, like how I see it in the book. It's good visually. It's it's good to like oh watch and feel nice. It's a it's a very easy dopamine hit, but it's not the book. It doesn't make you feel the same way like the book does, because it really doesn't address a lot of different issues. For example, um, in the book, our protagonist Denny faces um, this thing where he's falsely accused uh, as sexually assaulting a minor. Like you know, he's falsely falsely as called a pedophile and falsely accused of doing all of these things, and his constant struggle and constant efforts trying to prove himself as as well as Enzo's struggle in trying to sort of communicate that you know because he's seen the entire thing happen you know his way of um, sort of trying to communicate to people the truth and that sort of angst comes to the reader where even the reader is like oh my god like you know he's innocent and you're sort of rooting for him and everything which you don't really see in the movie because that the entire part is removed out to keep it PG-13 to keep it very key kid friendly to keep it very you know light and a happy sort of a dog movie and they've taken out this very core part of the book okay even the 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 struggles of what Eve faces um, the struggles of um, you know like um, a lot of different things like you know of like the career aspect and everything I just glossed over in the book and they keep it as a sideshow and they try just they just try to make the movie like a cutesy thing try to give the dog a lot of air time, uh, try to keep it sort of, you know, awe, awe, like try to induce that awe feeling, which this book is absolutely not about. If you if you feel that this, if you if you want to pick up this book just thinking that this is a aw dog's movie, uh, aw dog's book, it's not. It's There are a lot of different themes here which you really sort of need to uh, delve into uh, and things like that. So that's something which I really didn't like about the movie. Um, the other thing, that I didn't really like about the movie is how in an effort to make it PG-13 since they removed the you know the whole uh, sexual assault part and everything they sort of added so since they had to give uh, you know um, they had to sort of stay somewhat close to the storyline they gave him a different criminal charge and that's a fourth degree assault a fourth degree assault a fourth degree assault I don't even think that you know people will get terminated over that kind of thing it's still lightweight thing and you know people would you know it would be very easy for someone to deal with that as compared to being accused of raping a minor okay so that's so when the, when the movie substituted that for this it just felt very weak and it felt very watery um, a lot of the struggles that Denny faces is a direct consequence of this accusation so losing his kid uh, losing his job, not being allowed to leave the state, not being, you know, um, being socially, uh, having the social stigma on him and, you know, all of these things. All of this stems from the fact that he's being accused of uh, basically assaulting a minor. But when when the, when the felony uh, in the movie is like fourth degree assault, like because he, whatever, like, you know, hit or whatever, that all of this stuff really doesn't exist. Like, you know, People would, since he's a biological father, he would never lose, you know, rights to his child just because of this, just because of, you know, punching someone or whatever it is. And so that sort of makes it feel very superficial. Like, you know, his struggle doesn't really come through. It's like, oh, it's just a misdemeanor, a misdemeanor charge or something like that. And that, you know, that again, like I said, it feels very watery and it feels, it's just superficially there. It's just that thing becomes the background and not really the main thing, which is what the book talks about. I feel this book is Gartstein's excuse to talk about heavy things which aren't really being spoken about in the media today but because it's not being spoken about in the media today and because it's not a mainstream topic he sort of told it through the eyes of a dog which sort of made it more acceptable like I said genius move but the movie just takes everything away from that if the movie is like um you know, a drizzle in the morning, like that level of inconvenience. This book is like Senna in the 1991 Grand Prix. I read this somewhere, uh, but I had this exact same thought. This is this book is like Senna in the 1991 Grand Prix, driving with or just on sixth gear, huge pain in his neck. You know, struggling at the at the in the cockpit, horrible conditions, raining, and he still manages to win. That's that's exact if I could encompass this entire book 
into one real life scene it would have been that it would have been the 1999 1991 grand prix at um um it would have been the 1991 grand prix in brazil and senna at the wheel that's what this book is about and like i said i really didn't enjoy the movie very much it was a very watery very dilute version of what this book is really really about and uh yeah those are my thoughts on the book as well as the movie kind of um when it comes to the book itself let's talk about the physical aspects um i got the, i'm not sure if you could you can see this cover but this this cover is based on the movie adaptation um which i don't really like i like the original god stand cover it felt a little nicer at the time taken to read this book you can read this book in a sitting if you start in the morning you could finish by night um it's just it, it's a single day read taking breaks for lunch and maybe like snacks or tea or whatever it is and you could still be done by night so it's a very fast read it's a fast paced read um one thing i didn't miss out to say was uh, with regards to the casting of the movie I, this is moving to more towards the movie review rather than a book review but the casting of the movie was really really nice i did enjoy uh, venti milia's um you know acting in the movie and stuff like that but the thing that i hated about the movie was enzo's voice it sounded like like a mix of morgan freeman and it just sounded old and it didn't really go with i mean i know enzo is supposed to be old when he's narrating this but by god it sounded it sounded so undog like it sounded not human not dog it sounded grandiose arrogant it sounded very weird it didn't sort of fit my mold of what enzo when enzo was talking about a lot of different important topics it i really didn't it i really didn't feel that urgency or i really didn't feel that emotion coming through with the voice action of uh, you know that was being narrated so i really didn't like it um yeah coming back to the book itself i did feel the voice of enzo was much much um uh, better in the book and um, you know when when he talks about different things you can sort of feel that emotion come through you can sort of feel what enzo is talking about even though his words are very basic and even though he's talking in an almost dog like manner you feel that emotion coming through um the last thing i would like to say is this book is very 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 quotable you could literally i could take a highlighter and highlight pages of this book with how amazing some of the quotes are and a lot of these quotes are going to go in a common place book but like i said it just hits you it just hits you really hard and if you want to be motivated in life if you want to feel that you know never give up on your dreams always keep chasing always keep uh, you know always keep fighting for that finish you know this is the book for you also if you are going through a lot of struggles in life as a guy and you feel like you don't have anybody to talk to i would definitely definitely recommend you um going through this book um i have a friend right now who's going through a similar situation as to what danny was going through i have some colleagues at work rather ex colleagues now since i joined my new work but i do remember uh, a couple of weeks before leaving i do remember sitting in my you know when i was you know in the cubicle in the washroom at work or in the bathroom at work i remember someone walking in shutting the door and just sobbing just sobbing and it broke my heart sitting next to him and not being able to communicate with him because he would be so embarrassed if i ever i knew i knew who it was based on his the, the shoes the kind of shoes that he was wearing but would have embarrassed him to no end knowing i heard that and that's something that's not acceptable and that's something that needs to be spoken about and that needs that sort of support needs to be given to a sick to people to men the amount of expectation that's on men i, I know i'm sort of digressing i'm going off the topic here from the book review but this is something that's explored in the book and i and i want to talk about it a lot of different times the struggle the men are glossed over in like the world the men struggle so when you when you uh, the main antagonist or the main people who are against denny are uh, eves in laws and um, you know you might say oh what it like you know these people are assholes right you know these people are horrible people but this is something that most men face on a daily basis right 
a judge for the amount of money you make, a judge for the, the decisions you make, a judge for the size of your shoulders to carry the family, you're judged for your workplace competence, you're judged for, um, you know, for being weak if you're trying to express your emotions. And the biggest judge of character isn't even other people. The biggest judge of this is the man himself or the guy himself. Men put so much stress on themselves to be the alpha. That's also another theme that's explored in the book. To be the dominant guy, to be the best. It's all about, so here, okay, here's another aspect that's very well explored, right? So when you're a dog, you have an alpha and you have the pack and you have the one dog that, you know, sort of leads every other dog and things like that. We are very, men are very very similar to dogs in that aspect. There's this constant struggle to be better than everybody else, and there's this constant struggle to prove yourself and to take care of the pack, and that comes at a cost, and that cost is not explored. And people need to talk about this. People need people need to talk about this without talking through it through the eyes and the mouth of a dog. They need to talk about it um, in a very real way and I do appreciate this book it did connect to me on a personal level just because of me knowing people that are going through all of this and this is something that God stands spoken about um, so basically this book is the inspiration for this book is God stands um, sort of love for racing and all of that stuff but also the trials and tribulations that one of his friends was going through, uh, you know, one of his racer friends was going through at that point of time. So this book is, I don't know whether it's loosely based on it or whether it's very closely based on his life. But um, so even Garth Stein didn't feel, even the author, he didn't feel comfortable talking about or addressing this issue head on because it's very easy to be bashed I guess when you do talk about a lot of this so he sort of put it through an angle of a dog and a lot of people don't get that a lot of people think oh it's a dog movie ha 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 great oh it's so sad when the dog dies but there are real issues being talked issues being talked about in this book and do to pick this up to give it a read the dog aspect for me is both primary and secondary if you're a dog lover you're definitely going to feel sad one thing I did love about Enzo is so. I, the thing I love about dogs is when, as well as how Enzo talks about this, it's my den, right? I mean, again, I'm choking about just talking about it. The last couple of chapters, right? It's not even so. You know, death. You know, Enzo is gonna die in the first chapter because he's talking about his death. But the last chapter, even in his death, Enzo is talking about Denny, and he's hoping that Denny becomes successful and Denny. He's talking about my Denny, and I hope my Denny wins all the races, becomes a professional driver, and when I do, so he believes that you know he's going to get reincarnated as a man, and he hopes that he's going to meet Denny when he's successful. And this, like I said, choking. Um, and this is this is explained so well, you know, to have someone root for you like this dog does for Denny, to have that kind of support, that's, you know, that's what's required, that's, that's the thing, a lot of people don't get it, man, they don't, they just don't freaking get the amount of struggles there are in life, from a man's point of view, from, you know, it's something that's not very easy to talk about, because it's a very, such a, it's such a unique situation, okay, I'll give you an example, right, so, I'm not saying this is only like a men problem, this is a women problem as well. So if a woman has faced assault and if a woman has faced, um, you know, domestic abuse um, or, you know, something like that, it's very easy, not, it's not very easy, but it's easier to sympathize with the woman, but it's very, very difficult to empathize with the woman. Uh, similarly, when you talk about veterans returning from war or if you, uh, people who've suffered incredible losses, it's very, again, it's easier to sympathize with them rather than empathize with them. And um, this is uh, this is true for the struggle that men face as well. If, if I'm working, right, the kind of 
the kind of struggles that I face at work, it's not a big deal if you like look at the grand scheme of things, but it's very, very, very difficult to talk about that to someone because of because nobody would understand that or we or we feel that nobody would understand that. And that's why it's so important to have a good support system, even if it's just a dog, even if it's just a dog lying there, sniffing at your fingers, licking your face, it makes a world of a difference. And if you have people around you that are always rooting for you, no matter what, there's one, um, there's one um, scene in the book wherein, um, so Denny is crushed from one of the court verdicts and you know, things like that and he comes home and he brings out his hard liquor and he's drinking it and um, so the dog you know the dog's pissed off about it Enzo is pissed off about it and he barks at him and whatever and then he feels very sad that Denny is drinking and giving up on life because he doesn't want Denny to give up and he goes and lies on this room and um, Denny after some time just walks into the room where Enzo is sleeping and he says oh have you given up on me the first time I brought you home in my car, you puked in the car, I didn't give up on you. And um, he's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not that weak, don't worry, I won't drink. And just having that, right, I mean, it's just a freaking dog, right, in the, at the end of the day. But having that kind of support system where people believe in you and expect you to do the good thing, the good things in life, it's, it's such a huge deal. Like, I cannot explain enough how huge of a deal it is. And I'm not just saying this for, for a, from a male perspective, even from a female perspective, the, the scene where, um, so Eve is, uh, you know, she's, she's scared about dying and she's alone in her bed and she feels nobody can understand her but the dog. Because even if the dog can't really talk, can't really have, you know, doesn't really have that sort of communication system like we do, she still feels comforted having the dog there because of how the dog support so irrational loyal support sometimes you just need that you just need someone sh you know standing on the sidelines saying hey listen man you can do this and that kind of that belief is um something that really 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 touched me and really it just made me weep for hours after i read this book it just keeps coming back every time i this last few chapters man it's not even about you know, it's not even about Enzo dying, but like, you know, the amount of wishes, the amount, even in his last dying phase, he's still thinking, I want the best for Danny. And that's something that's really valuable. And that's something which you can take away from this book. So yeah, this is my book review for we are racing in the rain once again. Sorry for all of the lights have gone out, the candles have gone out as well. But uh, I do really hope that you enjoyed the book review. Please pick up this book, read it with an open mind. Um, don't think of it just as another dog story. I, you know, whilst talking about the book review I just read, fans of Mali and me rejoice. One of the review. Highlights by Entertainment Weekly. This is not Mali and me. This is something much bigger than Mali and me. And um, it's marketed in a way that's Mali and me because, you know, that sells a lot of more copies, but there's something bigger than that. And yeah, check out the book. If you guys read this book, let me know what you'll think in the comment section down below. America, I'm gonna lend you this book. It's very important for you to read this. But I'm very sorry I didn't like the movie. Uh, but I do feel the book's a little better because I sort of empathize and connected more with the book itself. Because those who don't read this book, you're going to weep. Divya, read this book, you're going to weep, but you're going to be okay about it. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, stay safe everybody.